Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining the Vetiver Breakfast Meeting today. Today we'll be having the usual rundown of the equities and fixed income markets. Um, and we'll also hear from our media partners at Frontier Fire Reports. Before we start, we'd like everyone to note that this meeting is being recorded and is also being um, broadcast live on Facebook, on our Vetiver Online um, Facebook page. Also, the recording may be shared with third party listeners. We'd also like everyone to note that the meeting is set to last for only 30 minutes, and that would include Q&A. Um, although if you're unable to get to your question during the 30 minutes, we advise that you send your questions to us at um, research at betiva.com and we'll get responses out to you. So today we'll be starting with the analysis of the equity markets. Good morning, Jim. Hello, Shem. All right, we'll move on to Omarigi and come back to Shem in a few minutes. Good morning, Omarigi. Good morning, Chima. Good morning, everybody. So I'll just quickly give you a recap of fixed income activities for yesterday. I'll be starting with the money market. The money market opened 109 billion short yesterday after taking in CBN overnight repos. When we adjusted for the 10 odd repos, the market was about 134 billion short. This extremely tight system liquidity and the 20 billion or more auction announcement pushed rate to trade between 13 to 15%. With the CBN selling 12.84 billion at the OMO auction with a total subscription of um, 21.28 billion era, the market is expectant that FAC posting will ease the current strain system liquidity, especially with the bond auction settlement of 158 billion due today. We believe interbank rate will trade at similar levels today as the market fund for the bond auction settlement with more participants expected at the CBN discount window. Moving on to the FS market, the parallel market gained one Naira yesterday to trade at 185 Naira to a dollar, while the AND E window traded at a high of 136.10 Naira to a dollar. And the closing rate for yesterday was 410 Naira to a dollar. So we saw a significant decline, a significant improvement in our industry turnover yesterday as it closed at $108.04 million from the $40.13 million recorded on Wednesday. So our outlook remains the same. The Naira will continue to trade at these levels, barring any significant inflow of FS into the system. Moving on to the TBS market, it was another trading session in the TBS market yesterday. This was against the backdrop of the extremely tight system liquidity in the money market. We continue to see improvement in the bid and ask spread at the secondary market, although trades were extremely hard to consummate because of the lack of liquidity in the system. Overall, rates went up by an average of um, 10 basis points on the long end of the benchmark of Yesterday, the CBN conducted an OMO auction where they offer 20 billion across the three tenors on offer. The short end maintained to close at. We saw, we saw a slight change in the stop rate for the sh short and mid tenors. The short end closed at um, 6.90. The total subscription there was 1.84 billion, while the amount sold was. Um, 1.84 billion. Amount of that there was 5 billion. The mid end also changed to close at 8.48%. The total subscription on that end was just 1 billion. Total amount so there was 1 billion. The long end maintained to close at 10.1%. The total subscription on that end was just 18.44 billion. Amount of that was 10 billion and the total amount sold was 
10 billion. So overall, the CBN was only able to sell about 12 point, 12 point, um, 84 billion against the 20 billion they offered at the auction yesterday. So we expect the current sentiment witnessing the TB space yesterday to sustain today in the absence of any significant improvement in system liquidity. I'll conclude with the bonds market. The bonds market resumed on a very active note yesterday as um, traders traded post option sentiment and also the anticipated couponing flows of about 113.41 billion coming in next week spot selective buy interest across the mid to long end of the benchmark curve. However, the extremely tight system liquidity so far as on the 2027, it's the highs of um, 12.40 levels, which is about 15 basis points higher than where it closed at the last auction. That was 12.25%. These attractive levels, was, uh, we are on the back of um, players trying to create liquidity by offering their positions at good levels. We also saw the 2045 and 2045 49 is offered at around 13.85%. Um, that was also the stop rate for the 2045 at the previous auction. So our expectation for today is that the, um, the bonds market will remain bearish in the interim on the back of the strained system liquidity. That will be all for fixed income. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Amarigia. So you mentioned that in the OMO auction held yesterday, um, especially across the shorter tenors, the short to mid tenors, um, subscription levels were very low. So do we attribute this to the level of liquidity already mentioned or, and or um, is it, do we attribute this to banks' reluctance to be debited elsewhere with CRR or does it, how do we, explain this um, lack of enthusiasm, um, especially with respect to foreign investor participation. Hello, Chima, thank you so much for that question. Okay, um, from trend, the longer end has always received subsequent um, the large subscription portion of the auction. So it has always been like this. The larger end has always been the most subscribed ten on offer. So even for banks, they prefer to go for the longer end just because of the return. The return on the longer end is around them ten point one percent, just for them to maximize yield. So it's all about yield maximization. That's all. That's why that end always receive the larger portion of the subscription, and also giving where system liquidity is also so. Those that usually just, you know, go, if they have like 100% as total demand, they usually go for the long end 60% and then spread the other 40% across the shorter tenors. But now giving their system liquidity is, they just want to put all their funds in the, in the one that's in the tenor that is giving them the larger return. So that's why you saw reduced subscription levels on the mid to short end. It's just all about maximization of return. Okay, thank you very much, Amarigi. Next, we'll, okay, we'll just take additional inputs from Dakbo before we move on to Jim. Just go ahead, Dakbo. Dakbo, you may go ahead, please. Okay, thank you, good morning. So we also heard that CBN sold, or well, they sold to offshore investors um, some FX. They started selling in the last couple of weeks. And again, offshore players are also part of people um, participating in the OMO window. So the fact that um, they've started selling to them means they need to keep some liquidity. And we saw a bit of sell side um, in the OMO space last week on the back of that as well. So that reduces the people going into bid. Banks are thin on liquidity due to CRR debit and system is generally thin. And these offshore guys are not also going in for the auction because they are waiting to see when the, you know, sale of FX get to them. So how that continues to contribute in addition to what Marike said. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we'll hear from Shion on the equity, on equities. In West Africa. Good morning, Sean. 
Good morning, Chima, and good morning, everyone. Um, we we'll start off in Ghana today. The, the GSC main index um, closed up five bits to cement a one week gain of about 1.4% um, in the market. Um, the index took a breather in terms of activity level, though, with 64 and 63% decline in volume and value traded. Uh, market breadth closed positive with four gainers and uh, there were no losers in that, in that session, which led the market to an overall year-to-date gain of 20.39%. Um, in today's session, we expect a flat to positive session as well um, with fewer trades. Uh, moving to BRVM, um, the composite index also sustained positive run with a 61 bips, um, 61 basis point appreciation. SMB Code of War once again led the gainers board in the session with a 7.48% gain supported by SAF and CIE Code of War. Um, yesterday's gain pushed the index to a 2.9% weekly gain and a 1.73% year to day return. <clears throat> Also, all sectoral indices, such as the BRVM Agri, BRVM Industrial, and BRVM Finance, all closed higher. Uh, going into today, we expect the market to close out the last trading session of the week um, in the green as well. So back in, um, back in Lagos, the market continued on its positive trajectory with a marginal one deep gain. Um, gains in Access Bank, First Bank, and UBA, amongst others, outweighed losses, outweighed losses in GTB and Zenith. Market was largely mixed, um, evidenced by decline in volume, while turnover improved by 58% in the session. Tier one banks dominated, um, dominated as GT Bank, Zenith Bank, FBN, UBA, and Access Bank accounted for 82% of market turnover. Um, to sustain the dominance of that uh, of that sector on the main index, just like we've seen it in the last two to three trading session, the banks have always been the major major stocks traded on the on the Nigerian um, on the Nigerian index. All the sectors are also, save for the oil and gas, settled in the red, um, with just the um, oil and gas sector up by twenty one bips which was largely driven by 396 basis points, gaining um, the share price of Rwando PLC. Mm. So moving into today, market, uh, market should trade mixed, uh, just like we've seen in uh, a couple of the sessions um, this week. And um, also on lower, we foresee lower turnover in that uh, in this session. Also, we expect the benchmark index to close to close the week positive on the back of the impressive 0.83% week to date return, well, which is barring any major downward um, close in any of the high cap um, in any of the high cap stocks. So we we'll continue to watch out for that. Also, we we expect a few other corporate to release their Q1 results um, today and going into next week. So we'll watch out for that and see and check out um, investors' reaction to all this. So that'll be it for the equities market. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Shem. Next, we'll hear from our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports. Today, Temple Ashaja will be speaking to us on West African updates. Good morning, Temple. Good morning, Chima. Good morning, listeners. Uh, quickly, it's more about oil sector, oil, the oil sector and a bit of the banking space today. and. It's in the northern part of Africa, where Libya government just transferred uh, some $234 million to the National Oil Company. Lately, you recall that the sector has been heavily challenged in terms of funding resources. Like they are lacking in funds for the maintenance of the fields and pipelines. And of course, they've also been 
unable, quite a number of the companies, oil companies have been unable to fulfill their contractual obligations to contractors. So there's this accumulation of debts um, in that uh, um, sector for Libya at the moment. Of course, you also know about the uh, output uh, 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 courts that the OPEC has been carrying out uh, lately. They have been trying to catch up you know, with that trend, but it's been a bit difficult. Overall, um, uh, crude oil production in Libya lately has been below 1 million barrels per day. Uh, companies like uh, Sat Oil, which is the second largest oil company in that country, has had to slow down in production in the past few weeks due to funding challenges. And they are now set to cut down by some 100,000 uh, 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 barrels of oil per day again. Uh, the Arabian Gulf Oil Company has actually done about 90% cuts to some 230,000 barrels per day uh, lately. Uh, so the funding that the, um, the government has now transferred 1.05 billion dinars uh, to the National Oil Company is to help, is to be able to help them manage all of these uh, funding challenges that they are currently facing. It was only recently that they signed their budget, but apparently the central bank has been unable to disburse funds or release funds to uh, the challenged uh, companies, the Arab, the Arabian Gulf Oil Company, and of course the South Oil. So but analysts generally at Bloomberg believe that this is not, the funding is really, really uh, below what is what is expected to help solve some of the problems that they have at the moment. For example, they need to get some spare parts and fuel, as well as chemicals for operations. But this funding is only going to uh, serve as, uh, serve as a uh, stopgap measure for this uh, period. The other story will be access banks um, purchase of bank uh, Bank ABC um, in Botswana, Bank ABC being um, African Banking Corporation of Botswana. Moody's released a statement yesterday saying that it is credit positive. Uh, they do expect it to contribute to Access Bank's diversification strategy to support their profitability and um, that it's basic, the deal is not going to materially affect the asset quality of Access Bank. Again, because uh, Bank but, uh, bank ABC is about the fifth uh, largest bank after Bank Gaboron in uh, Botswana, they do expect that uh, this will give Access Bank some solid footing in that country in Botswana, and it will help Access Bank to diversify its revenue sources outside of Nigeria. In the southern part of Africa, uh, Motos, which is the non-manufacturing automotive company, um, one of the largest actually in South Africa, has gotten the approval of government to purchase the remaining 40% of Renault South Africa's uh, um, assets in South Africa. Uh, part of the understanding that they reached is that it's a there will it, it, it will lead to some kind of a 10 year um, exclusive distribution agreement within south africa and the neighboring territories generally the sadc uh, community and the deal has now been approved by the competition tribunal um so uh, involving the eastern part of africa the trade deficit widened by some 13 percent so around 198 billion shillings for the month of february in kenya and um, we understand that the government is doing all it can to address that uh, challenge in that region. This is the much we have today. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Temple. Um, we have come to the end of the presentation segment and we can now take questions from participants. If you have any question for any of the speakers or analysts, please send your questions using the if you're, if you're joining us on Facebook, you can send your questions in the comment section, or if you're joining us on Zoom, you can either either use the Q&A chat box or the chat box, or you can raise your hand if you would prefer to speak. Okay, I see that we have <clears throat> no question for us today. We thank everyone for joining us on the session today. We um, wish you a great day ahead and we hope that you will join us same time next week.
Good morning, everyone.